Hi everyone, this is Kelly from Truth and Story, and yes, we're talking about geomancy again. I'm doing lots of prep work for my class, and so of course it's something that is on my brain and, and you know doing the work for it. So <laughs> that's what you'll get some geomancy right now. I, it's, I was kind of showing you the metamor. I'm going to do a reading so you can see why I love geomancy so much. But um, I also wanted to kind of show I've been really um, tweaking. I love making forms. In fact, I recently found my very first form that I made that I used for years with tarot that, you know, had a sort of place to put notes. It had a place to check off majors and minors and numbers and things so that I could see, you know, patterns at a glance and things of that nature. So that was kind of fun seeing some of my original forms. Um, that was, you know, way back when it was just obviously for me and, and friends. And so, you know, so I've been tweaking with uh, a shield spread since I've started working with, um, with Geomancy just to kind of get like the perfect amount of information, right? You know, everything clear. I apologize. Isabel is not happy with my landlord going, coming in and out at somebody else's apartment. So <laughs> just have to ignore her. Isabel Louise, no. Um, so this was the first one that I kind of solidified everything that I wanted it to do because you could still see the houses in there um, and it just had all the information pretty much that I wanted of uh, just for a basic house but or shield chart. But then, you know, you do oftentimes want to use the house chart um, so that you can perfect what's called perfecting the chart and seeing um, whether or not something is that connection between what is potential and what will actually happen will happen, as well as more importantly for me is kind of seeing how it might come about. Um, but, so this worked for quite a while as well, however I found myself going back to this one a lot because I like the space to jot notes and to make connections and things of that nature, uh, that this really shrunk this part down and I'm really only doing quick things over here and I don't really need all this room even when I do the Hori um, astrology with, with the Geomancy Shield. So this is the current um, iteration of my geomancy chart and where I've taken the um, house chart and made it small over here because as you'll see when I do it when I do a reading I don't really need this to be highly detailed um, I have all of the check boxes that I need I've added in a couple new ones for part of spirit part of fortune and the sum of the chart which talks about how fast something might occur um, and so I've also per my friend Bart's suggestion I took I wanted to make sure I denoted the mothers because the mothers are the, the divination part of it the rest of its sort of um, kind of condensing numbers down in mathematics but the divination comes with the mothers they're the most important obviously the judge is the most important but just in terms of casting so he had that suggestion of just keeping it straight lines but uh, shading it in so uh, so yeah, so this is the third iteration of my geomancy chart, and I thought I would um, do a quick reading um, so that you can see why I think that geomancy is such a fantastic and I have a whole, uh, if you're interested in geomancy, um, it's not like you have to take class in order to look into it. I have a playlist on geomancy that has some information about it. Um, and the book that I recommend the most is, uh, there's not that many out there where you can source lots of old sources. Uh, but, I'm going to use the color one so it's obvious. Um, the John Michael Greer's The Art and Practice of Geomancy is definitely a book uh, that I uh, hands down recommend. If you buy one book on geomancy, that would be the one that I would get right now. There's one that eventually is going to be coming out that I would definitely recommend, but it's a lot more scholarly and a lot less practical usage. So right now that's what I would recommend. So I'm going to do an actual reading because, again, you know me, I don't feel like fake readings do a whole lot of good. Um, 
We need to have candles lit though. How can we possibly, of course, here we go. How can we possibly have a reading without candles? I don't know about you as readers, but I find that to be very strange indeed. Oops. This, um, I've not ever had one like this. This particular was a bit, just a plain old big one. But I've never had such a problem where if you stick it into something like that, it goes out. Uh, I'm sure it's just some kind of a safety feature, but it's really annoying because most of the time that's what I'm kind of lighting. I, and it was actually a two-pack, and only this one does it. So, not sure about that, folks. Regardless. Regardless. Okay, so this is going to be a reading for somebody. Of course, I am not going to put their name on here. They know who they are. Uh, today is the 29th. Uh, the house, so I'm not going to obviously go into detail on how to, I just said this is for people who want to kind of see the process from beginning to end, uh, but you always pick the house that is called the quizzed house, what is the house of the question, and in this case, because it's about relationships, it's going to be the seventh house, and um, uh, they're wanting to see a positive shift in a relationship, will that happen? So, that's the information that I need there. I know that I'm going to pay attention to the seventh house. Of course, we're also going to pay attention to the first house, which is the house of the self. So, the first thing that we have to do is roll our mothers. So, I am using dice that are color-coded. So, red is for fire, yellow is for air, blue is for water, and green is for... Uh, earth and so an odd number dice gets a single dot and a uh, all these are odd dots or odd dots odd numbers and then a uh, even numbers get a double dot you can also denote those with a line across which I'm doing because I find it to be easier to do some of the charts you'll see when I get there so that's the first mother So we have an odd, 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 oops, odd, odd, even, odd, 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 so we have queer, tail of the dragon, we have odd, odd, even, odd again, more queer energy. last mother we have even 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 odd even 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 odd so we have tristitia or loss so those are the, that's all we have to do with dice. We don't do anything else. Uh, the next thing we do is make our daughters, which is by taking the, the first set of lines, second, third, fourth lines, it makes the daughters. So we have one, 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 two, one, 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 two, one, 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 two again, one, 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 two again, one, two, 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 that's a good sign. So here we have Letitia, which is the opposite of, of Tristitia, which is loss. Uh, so in the house of relationships, we have uh, Tristitia, which is going upward. It's an arrow pointing upward. Uh, the fire is up here in the, the active line is in the fire. So lots of passion. It's not overly stable energy, but it is joyful energy. Um, and then we have two, one, one, one. So that's how we make our daughters. And then we start to combine. One plus one is two, which is an even number. One plus one is two, which is an even number. Two plus one is three, which is an odd number. And one plus two is three, which is an odd number. So we have Fortuna Major. We have two plus one 
is odd, 2 plus 1 is odd, 2 plus 2 is even, and 1 plus 2 is even. So we have Fortuna minor, you can see they're kind of flip-flopped. We have 1 and 1 is even, 1 and 1 is even, 1 and 1 is even, and 2 plus 2 is even. So we have populus, so nothing is, there's no energy that is active in that in populus. It's taking all its energy from around it because uh, there, is, uh, there isn't any uh, active energy within the figure. 2 plus 1 is uh, odd number, and all of these, so 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1, these are all odds, so we have via, which is very active energy. Change is in the change is in the forefront. So then we continue to pull down. 2 plus 1 is odd, 2 plus 1 is all the way across, so we're back to another via. Uh, we have the like, same thing here, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1, 2 plus 1. So this is actually good because we are seeing a lot of uh, moving energy. However, when it comes down to the judge, 1 plus 1 is going to be odd, or even, sorry, all the way across, right? So here we have populus um, in for the judge. Let me finish it before I stop. Uh, we will take the um, the self, which is the first house, and combine it with the judge. So the judge is the answer, uh, but we want to see the effect of this answer on the person who asked the question, and that is the effect of the ruling or the sentence. So again, we have one plus two is odd, 1 plus 2 is odd, 1 plus 2 is odd, and 2 plus 2 is even. Uh, so that's quite interesting because for them this may be the end of the line. But we're going to keep going before we make make any judgments there. So we've, um, we've done that now. We normally will do sort of the way of points, which is to follow any active lines in the judge. Now there are some people in olden days, uh, in geomancy, who will say if you get populace for the judge, you simply don't, you, you, you can tell the person, sorry, ask again another day. You would just say it doesn't have anything to say. There's nothing active here, so there's nothing for it to say. Now, if any of you have followed me uh, enough to know that I think everything has something to say. If it has come up, whether it be cards or dice or geomancy figures or whatever it may be, if you've asked a question and something has come up, there is a reason why it's come up and it does have something to say. Most, I would say most modern geomancers don't just not do a chart when it's like that, but it is something to pay attention because we can see that it's needing to take energy from elsewhere because it doesn't have any of its own. So that's something that's important. And we also can't follow the way of points because there's no active uh, energy to follow back to kind of see what's going on underneath. But there are still ways in which we can, can dig a little bit deeper. You know, one of the things that we can, you know, remember is that populace is connected to the moon and populace is connected with cancer, right? So it's very, I'm always so bad at writing cancer. I don't know why I have such a trouble doing it. Um, it's, it's connected with moon and with cancer. And so that's really interesting, right? Because it is receptive energy. Um, it's energy that is open um, and it's sensitive to energy around it, right? So this to me says that the matter isn't closed off. It's not like it's carcer or carker. Or how I say carcer, I've heard it carker. But it's not like carcer, which is all closed off. Um, in fact, we didn't get any carcer in here closing any of the energy off. Um, so it's not like it's closed off, it's just it hasn't settled. Um, and I do believe that an answer can be, you know, it's not, because I don't believe in a fixed future, we don't have that sense that anything is solidified yet. Uh, so things are open. Uh, the, uh, the one thing is though is that we do have um, an indication that 
uh, this person is probably pretty close. She's got the, the dragon's tail. Uh, so this is that sort of kind of walking away from a, a, from a door. And so you do have a little bit of the sense of, whereas this is sort of walking towards something new, this is sort of that energy of walking away. Uh, so we can sense that this person may be at that kind of point in which nothing is happening. And if nothing continues to happen, that may be a no for them personally. Now I'm just going to grab really quick from time passages. Uh, I'm going to grab the current chart that so this is when we cast, you know, cast this chart and I'm going to look at where things are right now and mostly looking what's in the first house which is nothing at the moment and looking in the seventh house as well we do have uh, actually not much except for I would kind of maybe pay attention to Chiron although I don't think past uh, geomancers would really look there so there aren't any planets uh, in either um, the first house or the seventh house at the time of the casting so that's something you can also look at you don't have to but you can take a look at it so, as I said, normally we would follow the path, uh, if whatever active dot, we would follow it up to its source and get some underlying information. We can't do that because there isn't any active, uh, and you can't even follow double dots, which some people will do. I don't tend to do that, but you can um, because there's no, there's no passive uh, here uh, in these so there's, there's nowhere to go we can't really see any underlying issues uh, but we can do the part of spirit which is quite, kind of giving us some things that are not seen uh, so to speak and this is where you add up all of the single dots of the first 12 houses and divide that by 12. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. We divide that into two. Of course, this was 24, so we know two 12s goes into that. Whatever remains is the part of spirit. So that is the fourth house. Um, so we had... Um, but we need to know that we had 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So I'll put that over here. Uh, the part of fortune, we would subtract this from 12, and whatever is left, of course, is going to be the part of fortune, 8. So we have 8 uh, over here. So the 8th house uh, up here, this is our uh, part of fortune which we can mark actually with uh, this. And uh, what house did we say? The fourth house here is with the part of spirit. So, and then the last thing as we do our sum, we need to sum everything up. So 64 plus all. Well, we already know there's 28 here. 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. And this is where you do have to do some math. You have 36, right? Uh, you double it, um, or, or you subtract, I'm sorry. Yeah, we got to subtract this first, sorry. Again, this isn't a teaching lesson. <laughs> Five. Uh, and this is a teaching lesson how bad I am at math. And 5 minus 3 is 2. So we take that 28 and we double it, plus we add it to the number that we had before. So 28 and a 16, uh, 24, 2, 4, 6, 8. 84. So this is interesting because uh, we the number we're wa watching is 96. And I'm going to redo this and make sure I did that correctly. Um, the number we're looking for is 96. Um, things that are under 96, is it means that it's going to happen perhaps faster than one expects. If it's over 96, things are going to happen slower. And it's proportional to how far away from it is on either way from 96. But let me do the math real quick and make sure that I did that right. Okay, shockingly, I did do the math right. I am horrible about doing math in my head. So this here is just uh, telling us 
that things may be a bit faster uh, coming to uh, this shift that they're hoping for or a shift of some sort uh, may be coming faster than they expect. Uh, the fourth house just tells us uh, we want to look here at this figure and see that um, we can kind of see some things that aren't seen. So for example, this has to do with um, moving. Uh, so whether some one of the person is open to moving, that may help. Uh, however, we do have in this house, Tristitia, which is a downward moving, this isn't really a movement card. This is literally more sticking, you know, if you think about the shape, uh, if you think about the shape of this, down into the ground, right? This is not something that speaks of moving. So part of the issue here, part of the um, unseen or paid, not paid attention to issue is is to do with moving and the lack thereof of moving. Uh, so perhaps being in a uh, distance relationship or something of that nature or needing to move. One person might need to move for a job and the other person isn't moving, those kinds of, of things. This doesn't indicate that that's going to happen really. So that's, it's, but it shows what one of the major issues is, is why this isn't really going any place. So you want to pay attention to it. Um, the part of fortune is actually where you might see some um, good things, some fortune, something good out of things. Um, this is this idea of cycles and changing, that things could change and that there could be something new. So this is, whereas this is sort of walking away, a situation ending and walking away, this is walking up to a new doorway. This is a dragon's head and going through that doorway. And it's in, this, uh, in the house of cycles, uh, the eighth house. So we do have the sense that there could be a way to start over again. Uh, uh, perhaps to bring some new energy or some new life and it is open to new energy but something is going to have to you, know, you have to go through the door there's something that's going to have to occur in order to bring this into life because right now it's just there's nothing happening here so um, what's interesting is that we can see that both the querent, so the person reading for, um, is really wants change and actually the situation or probably the other person actually wants change because we have via or way in both of those houses, but it's just not translating. It's not energy that is translating in a positive movement or shift in the relationship. So then the next thing that, that um, you want to do is, or that I would do, is to quickly do the house uh, in order to, to see whether it perfects. So in this case, we take the, uh, we start putting them in with the first house and go all the way through the houses. Uh, we're really not, you know, doing much paying attention to anything other than putting these into the houses. Nothing new is coming out of this chart. We aren't really gaining anything new. It's just a way of um, perfecting and seeing uh, how, if, if change does come about, how might that take place? Sorry, I really can't apparently talk and do this at the same time. One of the things you can really see in this chart um, is how that, unlike most divination systems, uh, Geomancy is one in which a, a, a figure, there's only 16 figures, uh, but a figure can show up in, like if you, ca you, you do a tarot deck, right, if you cast a tarot reading or anything like that, uh, even runes, if you, you know, pull runes out, you're only going to get one King of Cups or one, um, you know, uh, birch if you're doing oums, that kind of thing, uh, whereas this is one in which you can get multiple and seeing how those multiples interact with each other is part of the interesting. So we have to make sure to go over to nine here, again, talking and doing it at the same time, not so great, <laughs> going to cause mistakes. I will obviously uh, re make sure I go over everything to make sure it's right um, before I would descend it here. So. We're looking at the first house of the self, and we're looking at the seventh house of relationships. And we're looking at those two figure, figures to see if they are going to perfect. Uh, occupation means that they're both going to be the same exact figure. This is not the case. 
uh, one passing next to each other. So we're going to look at the ones next to each other and see if they are the same. If they are the same. So for example, here's the first house. We're looking to see if uh, Tristitia has moved next to that one. By moved, it just means is it showing up there? And the answer is no. But if we look at um, if we look at the seventh house and look to see whether the um, the dragon's tail, yes, look, it's next to that. So the answer is yes. Um, the answer is that this actually could, the answer to the chart could be yes. Uh, but as you see, it is the, the south. This is the house of the querent. This, this person has moved to next to the to relationship situation. So this indicates that the person asking the question is going to be the one who's probably going to have to do some work in order to make it happen. Um, so this, when you perfect a chart like this, it gives you that idea that um, how is if it's going to come apart which it actually says it is so this isn't closed off from happening um, however the way that it's going to happen is by this the person asking the question is going to have to put a lot of work into it and we can see from here that this person may be feeling towards the end of things and not you know whether or not they're going to to want to put that effort into it is going to be questionable. I don't believe in a fixed future. It's going to come down to this person's choices and decisions um, if they want to see something change. Because um, things as they stand, um, with if nothing, if there is no energy, and when we look at, at this, the querent and the, the answer or the judgment of what's the energy here, um, when we combine that, we can see again, she's still in that phase of, of you know, leaning towards walking away. So that's gonna come down to that understanding that they're gonna to have to sit down and really think if they're still in it. You know, if they're still in it to put some energy, is it still worth it to put energy into the situation? Um, so that's, that's really um, interesting. Um, this is promising because it does actually look like, again, as I said, it does look like both the querent and the other person are are interested or wanting change. Um, it just isn't happening. Um, something needs to, and it's interesting that this also comes up as happening faster because it, given what we can see about what they're feeling, it may be that sense that something's going to have to happen quickly or, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be over. So that's why we would look here. What's also interesting is that right now Chiron is in the seventh house in time of casting. So there is that little idea that what we can overcome, right, makes us stronger with Chiron. It's the wounded healer. The, the biggest trial uh, when you heal from it and you, you, you come, fall, come out of that is what makes you the strongest. It makes you able to then project that energy outward. So there is, that says to me a little bit that if that energy could be, be, um, if something could be made to happen, it would be good. And again, in the seventh house, we actually do have uh, Tristitia here, uh, which is that sense of joy. There is that sense of passion. It's not that the passion's gone. We can see all this fire here, uh, or all this active energy here. So it's not that that passion is gone. There are just circumstances that are going to have to be worked out. Um, and it's kind of on one person. Uh, at, at seems to be more on, on one person to, to do that work. So this is just an example of how uh, you might do a geomancy reading for an actual question um, and, and the amount of information that you can get. We see this, we can see this, uh, even though we couldn't follow the way of points, like there were some things that you, there's more, there's a couple other steps that you can take if there's active roles here. And I, but, but I feel like this really does show, because knowing the situation as I do, all of this information is very pertinent. Um, and and so the thing is, is that if because this figure had shown up in the chart and you just said, nope, I'm not doing it, it doesn't have anything to say, um, there, there's a lot of potential um, 
chew, you know, information that you can chew on here that would have just been discarded. Um, and I, you know, that comes up and that's come up before geomancy, this sort of idea that is, you know, you kind of get a reading and you think, oh, you know, that's not telling me anything. Like that's just, you know, it's, it's, you're just sitting there looking at those cards and like, these cards have nothing to say. I really am a firm believer that whether you're pulling cards or whatever it is you're doing, anything that comes up is a message. Anything that comes up has something to say uh, to the situation and I am not an advocate for just um, discarding um, that situation. So I'm going to pause really quick uh, so that I can, before somebody else is looking at this and saying, you messed it up because it is easy to mess up. One of the things you can do is look to the judge and there's some keys into saying whether or not you'd be wrong or not, but I'm just going to double check it. I should have done before. Um, and so I can tell you whether I messed it up or not. Yeah. Okay. I double checked it. I do recommend sort of doing your chart and then double checking just to make sure because it's, it's not that hard to be saying in your head one plus one is two, one plus one is two, and then just writing something entirely different. The human brain is fully capable of making errors, right? So anyways, uh, I just want to quickly show this um, to A, talk about sort of the evolution of, of charts. Uh, is anybody out there? I know, see, this, this um, I found that this group, we tend to be people card slingers, <laughs> tend to be people who love stationary, you know, binders, folders, markers, pens, um, that kind of thing. And I have a feeling that, and bullet journaling, journaling in general. So I have a feeling that other people are also people who are charts because I made a geomancy chart before I was ever, you know, considering teaching geomancy or anything. This is something I made for myself. So this is how my brain works. This is Libra brain on fire because I have a lot of fire in my chart, but I'm a Libra. So this is what a Libra brain on fire looks like. <laughs> Anyways, I hope this was interesting to you and I wish you an absolutely wonderful day.